I'm not sure about what I'm going to read or if I'm going to read or I'm not sure about anything <laughs> other than who I am and what I am and the fact that I didn't create myself, you know. There's no mystery about, you know, the reality of what I am. That's the one and only thing I can be sure of. Good to see you, Ian. Um, even though the part of my mind that thinks it knows the world and the self that, that I think myself to be, that, that part of my mind is completely uncertain about who I am what my reality really is. It's really an interesting dynamic, right? How the part of the mind that makes the world which doesn't know anything because it's all rooted in illusion. It's None of it is real. You can't be sure of any of that. How could you be sure of unreality if it never existed? <laughs> you can't. And so, you know, the part of the mind that believes in what it thinks and the effects of what it thinks is clueless about the underlying reality of what you are and who you are. Clueless. It just doesn't know. And it will, if you allow it, it will try to convince you of what it thinks you are. And you don't want to go there, <laughs> right? Because everyone who comes into the world and who takes on that error-prone, fundamental misunderstanding you know, abandon all hope, all ye who take that on, who enter into that system of misunderstanding that we call understanding. But there's no understanding in it. How do I know there's no understanding in it? It doesn't make me happy. None of the stuff that I think separately are within the mind that believes in its own error not, that aspect of mind doesn't really understand anything. It only thinks it does, right? And out of that system, what you get is an unending attempt to find pleasure, to please yourself, to find an answer in the midst of a system that has no answers to provide. So you just go from one false um, hit to another false hit, and, the, and it's always the same, you know, nothing works. Nothing really delivers on its promise in the world. How could it? How could unreality or an illusion provide you with the experience of substance that you really long for and desire? You can't find that, you know, in, in the world. So, um, so at some particular critical point in your own learning curve, everybody gets to having to make a decision, right? Heaven is a decision I must make. Another way of saying that is peace is a decision I must make. Love is a decision I must make. Truth, reality is a decision I must make. Not because it's dependent on whether I believe it or not, or whether I decide with it, for it or not, whether I accept it, recognize it, and accept it, be because it, it not, you know, it's like truth, love, God goes on uninterrupted no matter what I think. And I would venture to say no matter what you think, God is totally unaffected you know, the reality of, of perfect love creating like itself is completely unaffected by illusions. The, the only effect is the experience you seem to be having or perceiving in, in, a, in a world, you know, as twisted and upside down and as inverted as this one. So everybody has to come to that moment of realizing you know, there's got to be another way. It's got to be another choice, another something, another understanding other than the one that, you know, seems to be in popularity. Right? Now, the mind that believes in its own error would convince you that this is it. Except the hand you've been dealt and tough, you know, tough it out. 
You know, that's it. You, after all, you are who you think you are. <laughs> heaven forbid, right? Of course, heaven doesn't forbid it because it doesn't. Know, heaven doesn't know what that is. Heaven, truth, love, reality, perfectly loving presence, creator creating, couldn't doesn't know anything about illusions because in truth there are no illusions. And even within our upside down, twisted system of understanding, um, we've at least gotten to the point of recognize that, recognizing that illusions, I, I, I'm not taking the call, I don't even know why it's ringing on this, but decline. okay. So um, we know that illusions by their own definition are that which has no reality, that which doesn't really exist. But wait a minute, I see it. Well, physical sight is not a reality check. <laughs> In case, you know, everybody has to learn that at some point. Because I think I see it, because I think I hear it, because I think I feel it doesn't make it true. We don't really see it, though. We interpret it. Well, let's see how have I, yeah, yes, essentially that's true. I mean, the reality is, is we're not having a relationship with true thought. We're having a relationship with what we think to be thoughts. You know, we're having a relationship with a version of thought that is not, that is essentially devoid of thought. Thought being meaningful, understanding, expansive, abstract, loving, present reality. Everything in the world is, stands for something other than that. It's, you know, it's all relegated to being a thing, a limited thing, a pathetic thing. Something that I'm, I've tried or I've tried a, enough of those things to discover that they don't they're not anything, they're boring, you know. You know, and eventually when people get to that juncture, that place in life, you very often what there is is the attempt to cope with, with unreality as a reality, right? Mm -hmm. And the way we cope with it is we medicate ourselves, we drink, or we obsess about whatever the chosen obsession is, you know, we, we render ourselves impotent and weaken ourselves, sicken ourselves by attempting to find worldly remedies that have no comfort to give. That's really what drugs are. It's really what alcohol is. It's really what everything in the world is. And then you wind up with, uh, you know, wonderful insights that come from various identities in the world under uh, minds that have come to understand that that begin to say you can never get enough of what you don't really want <laughs> which is what which is what the root of every addiction is every obsession is every must have habit that makes us repetitive not creative right we've rendered ourselves repetitive habitual, not creative, and wonder why we're feeling numb and lost and alone and frightened. Ooh, sorry, Gus. And, and frightened, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm scared shitless <laughs> about everything. I mean, I really had to come to see that, that I was afraid of myself, I was afraid of my life, I was afraid of other people. I was afraid of, you know, my parents. I was afraid of authority figures. I was afraid of everything. I was afraid of God. I was afraid of, you know, everything in the world seemed threatening to me. Until I had an experience that indicated otherwise. And that experience being the one in which there was no fear. I had an experience in which there was no fear. I was experiencing myself being alive without fear. And everything was different. Radically breathtakingly, beautifully different, inexplicably different, but in no uncertain terms. So clear, such a vivid experience of being alive. And then out of that experience came a, a new understanding. 
and that new understanding which I began to hear in my mind and feel that became uh, a new found sense of comfort and some information content intelligence that was coming from somewhere out of that you know I I heard about A Course in Miracles and uh, just heard, you know, actually the way I had heard about A Course in Miracles, but I saw that guy Robert Scott, who was one of the original people around Helen Shuckman, part of that foundation for inner peace that first published the book. And in that very early time, that was uh, 1980 or 81 for me, I saw him speaking on a talk show about A Course in Miracles, and it was so captivating and compelling and lovely, just so beautiful. I ordered the book and I'll never forget the day I opened up to the introduction and read that first page. It it brought me to tears. It was like, oh, thank God. You know, here's an understanding that confirms and validates the experience that I'm having, which everyone is telling me is insane. You had the experience first? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did it yeah. persist? Or was it for... Oh, most sure. It's the only thing that has persisted. Everything else falls away and fails. Hmm. You know, you can't even sustain feeling bad or being afraid, right? All of a sudden, three or four days later or two <laughs> weeks later, you don't feel as afraid as you were about that. All of a sudden, if you if someone passed in your life or a loved one, suddenly something seemed to happen and they were gone and you felt this terrible, deep, I can't go on kind of loss, at, a, at some point, you wake up and you don't feel that way, right? So everything within the system of the ego's world, of the separate self-consciousness, none of that is sustainable. <laughs> That's going to go whether you... Whether you try to hold on to it and, you know, work out an arrangement where you keep it active in your life for a few more days or months or years or not, but it's going to go, you know, you can't take none of that with you, you know, you can't take the things of illusion with you, thank God. And any time you want to can be that moment of truth in which you depart from your own error, from your own insanity, right? As Jesus said, he says, you cannot... You cannot make your miscreation true. (laughs) And your reality, as given you by God, is beyond your own error. It's beyond your own error. Your error can't mess with it, can't touch it, can't affect it in any way. Right? So he says... um, What did he say? I just said I can't remember what I just said. Your your miscreations. You cannot make. You cannot make. Thank you. You cannot make your miscreations true, and your reality is beyond your own error. And that is why you must eventually choose. You must eventually choose. You have to use the mind, your power of mind, to choose differently. In the way he says it, and that is why you must eventually choose to heal this separation, because it's your own thinking. It's your own attempt to dissociate that which cannot be dissociated. You know, God's not going anywhere. You know, you are of him, and all that you are is sustained by his presence. So the living creator does and must go with you everywhere you go because in reality there's nowhere to go. You know, it's not a place, it's a state of mind, it's an experience of what we call heaven. This experience of unfathomable connection, comfort, security, knowing, gnosis. The living presence of your own soulful self as God created you and loves you and knows you to be right now. That's unavoidable and unescapable. Only the time you can choose, you seem to be able to choose when that moment of returning to reason and sanity is. And that's all the Course is. 
is a means to promote that, to restore that to you, to encourage you to take those steps only you can take. So, I, so how do you deal with people who they think you're insensitive? People that are still have fear? Yeah, or seem to have fear. Because it's fear. all my fear. Right, but they now they see, I'll say me, see me as insensitive. Because I don't cry at the funerals anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's okay, isn't it? I mean, if they see me as being a lunatic, which I've been called many, many times, you know, just <laughs> unreasonable, I, I eventually had to learn it was okay. I didn't need them to agree with me. And no matter what they thought, really didn't matter. Because it was only just like my thoughts are only what I think. And the only thoughts that really and truly matter are the thoughts I think with God. I had to then transfer that or convert that over to that understanding, which includes others, by which whatever they're free to think whatever they want. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. I'm not even trying to convince myself of anything anymore because that failed too. <laughs> you know, I just I had nowhere left to go, but to realize there, I didn't need to go anywhere, that home was okay, myself was okay, you know? There was nothing wrong with me. <laughs> I was a, uh, you know, uh, I think I've spoken about this, I was a seminar leader. So it's, before I go to that though, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, be, be, because the reality, you know, I had to learn that in here, too, because people come into the group with different understandings, different ways of interpreting the Course, different beliefs, and I had to learn that it was okay for everybody to just have whatever experience they had, and that it wasn't my job to prove anything or, or you know, to validate anything. If they don't believe it, it's okay. It's all right. You don't have to believe it. But do you sometimes feel isolated? Oh, I feel isolated. Within my Jeffrey thinking, Jeffrey personality, I'm, like, I'm lost and hopeless. Um, and, you know, I'm lost and confused. Always. I mean, I feel I, I'm a fish out of water all the time within this system mm -hmm. when I see myself that way. But simultaneously and before all that, I'm as God created me. And I can return to that normalcy, and that's what it is. Peace is normalcy. It's reality. It's grounded in everlasting, unalterable truth. Eternal reality. That's what I am, an expression of eternal reality. So then why do I have to worry about any, any about this, about what I think? or what anybody else thinks. So what, how that translates is less, you know, Brenda and I were talking about this today, you know, less, than, less need to explain anything and more ability to just listen and empathize and feel into others. Just feel, feel them. Feel who they are, not necessarily as it is as they stated or reported to be in words or concepts I don't understand you okay <laughs> all right all the while they can, it would be impossible that they not understand me now given their mentality their thinking their belief system their egocentric f falsehoods they might make such a claim and even feel have feelings that support that, that God's a lunatic, <laughs> right? I, I had, there was a girl in here who came in one night, she, she was looking to find the Course in Miracle Authority so that I could be banished from hosting groups, and, you know, because she thought, she thought I was nuts. But, I mean, I understand that because to my thinking, my Jeffrey worldly belief system, I, this business of a eternal, eternally created, eternal self is nuts. What does that even mean? That has nothing to do with what I think I am. Correct. But it has everything to do with what I am and who I am. And that presence, that self, will comfort me and assure me whenever I'm open to receiving myself. That self, holy self, one self, Christ self. 
because it's always here. It doesn't go anywhere. It has nowhere to go. Reality can't change its stripes, nor would it, you know, would the idea of that make any sense, you know? So I have to get comfortable experiencing my own sense of discomfort when Honora doesn't agree with me or someone gets frustrated or upset because of what, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, I have, I had to learn how to just let it all be, you know, just let it be the way it is. In the, in the a present, in the present and abiding understanding that nothing is the way I perceive it or understand it to be. So, so beyond the misunderstanding that, say, nailed Jesus to a cross, he knew, he knew who they were, and he knew that they couldn't really damage or threaten or hurt anything. So have at it. You know, if, that's, if you need to go there again, have at it, you know? It's not going to affect anything. <laughs> now... No one is asking you or me or any of the apparent separate selves to have to go through another meaningless, you know, episode of the death ritual. Nobody, there's no, there's no reason for that. And your, and that deeper, greater understanding that comes from the mind of God, who is always sharing His mind with you, because God is the mind with which I think. If I'm not thinking with God, I'm not thinking at all. Right? That will always answer on behalf of the universal reality in which every living thing is united within, and forever sure of and secure within. Just so, so how does that, what does that mean? That means a lot less being defensive and, and being at the effect of what others think or say or do, even. And a greater, far more powerful present experience of the unimaginable, the incomprehensible, wondrous, miraculous presence of love Christ here now right whenever you set aside your separate thoughts your separate beliefs your quivering shaking trembling ideology and even the emotions you may be feeling he enters in right you get an experience of something unimaginable which will settle your butt down and assure you it'll embrace you it'll it'll fill you it'll empower you it'll it'll provide whatever is necessary and all that will be required you don't have to understand that any of it all the, the only thing that's required is that you listen and let it animate you let it express itself through you and what you discover in the process that that whatever the hell it is that's expressing itself, you come to understand that that's what you are. That's who I am. Not this whole other nonsensical, disorienting, raging personality that I portrayed myself to be. So how does that affect things? Well. You have to find out for yourself, you know, what it's like when you just are yourself and not trying to make a case for anything. You're just letting selfhood, sonship in God, selfhood in God, universal reality in God, be the voice that you give your voice to. And very often without the need to say anything, just the sheer presence of that understanding will say whatever is necessary. So unimaginable things happen. Of arguments are avoided. Unnecessary words um, don't occur. Less explanation, less talk, talking about it, more experience of being it. 
and sharing the experience of that in the, in the in the perception of in my dream of it being the way it is, right? You know, just trusting in God, tr- trusting in God. Where? Here. <laughs> here, not over here, but not over there. Everywhere, no matter what is said or done. Or now, I, I understand that can seem a little daunting and you know how do you do that I don't know how you do that it you 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 grow into that you you earn that experience in every moment that you choose to set aside your illusions whatever form they present themselves and whether they're in whether they're occurring in a feeling an upset, a disturbance, a thought, a, a, a wanting to react, a wanting to explain, a wanting to convince, a wanting to argue, a wanting to prove something. You just take a breath, you know, and let this other thing happen. And that may produce words or explanation or some dramatic expression on your part, but it's different, you know, it's like, it's, it's okay to raise your voice when what's raising your voice is love and not defensiveness. You, you know, it's amazing what you can feel in here in those moments of passion, in those moments of true inspiration when you're willing to be vulnerable in a defenseless because in my defenselessness lies my salvation not not in anything I know how to do or would attempt to do you know to hold up my sinking ship (laughs) there's got to be another way and that other way is always here that the way is here, right? I just have to let it unfold, let it, let it present itself. How does Jesus say it? He says in many ways all throughout the course, but one of them is that, and and you you, you let that true self teach you of itself. Well, how else can that happen unless I set aside my version of myself? If I keep on being a spokesperson for that, I'm in trouble. You know, I, I'm, I'm in a world of my, a, a world of hurt of my own making. I'm going to suffer, and I'm going to, I'm going to be afraid, and I'm going to say thing, things I don't mean. I'm going to do things I don't mean, and I'm going to react and just continue, you know, exploiting my own mess. Mess, you know. Jesus says, that mess you think to be your life is not your life. (laughs) I mean, what a sense of humor this guy has. (laughs) You know, that mess, all that trouble, all that anxiety, all that sense of hopelessness and despair is not what you are. It's not who you are. And he says, listen up if you want to know who you are. Listen to me, because I know who you are. Me being the voice of spirit, the voice of yourself, right? Because there's only one here, you know. You don't need multiple teachers of God to bring peace into the world, right? There's, a, there's only one, and that's you. And the situation that you seem or think yourself to be in is the perfect situation for that discovery, which is a substantial discovery. Did you want to say something? Yeah, just I'm, sure. I'm, I've noticed. I mean, I'm getting more comfortable with this being you know, yeah. instead of talking. Yeah. But that doesn't go well on dates. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I don't know. Maybe it goes really well. <laughs> and the reality of that is that partner, that that partner, that right person for your development, your learning experience, and your salvation just hasn't arrived yet because you're a little unsure about what you're representing 
and whether you need to be a certain way in order to make that happen or whether you can just be true to yourself and trust that something of that nature that will fulfill my every need will happen. I don't know what it'll look like. I don't know who that other would be, but surely they will show up in some form as you maintain that vigilance and that loyalty to yourself. Mm -hmm. that, un that primary understanding that, that suggests and would remind you that, remind me that I need do nothing. I don't have to be a certain way for anybody. You know, what, is, what, is, uh, what does that character say in the movie, American Gangster, the Denzel Washington character? He says uh, he learned from his previous boss that the loudest guy in the room is the weakest guy in the room. I, I took that from that movie because I love the understanding in that. You know, I don't, there isn't anything to prove. So... And the, and the comfort and the security that I long for, that I think should or must come from another, can only come from my one and only, my beloved self. And as I grow into that relationship, more, ex, more willingness to recognize it, accept it, celebrate it, and honor it, then everywhere I go I'm at rest and my needs are being sustained. And what that manifests itself in the form of is others, <laughs> apparent others who understand that and, and honor that, respect that. And for me, a marriage, you know, we've been, Brenda and I have been together since 19... 76 we we uh, connected and oh it was a rough road let me tell you <laughs> for a lot of years because you know I had a lot to learn and she might tell you that she did as well you know and it's a miracle that we went through a very difficult process made difficult by moi myself, my Jeffrey's way, my adherence to Jeffrey's way, this system of hard-headedness, sure of itself and its understanding, even though I was never sure of anything. I was making the whole thing up. <laughs> you know, I was quaking in my boots, afraid of her as much as I was of myself. But something happened in the midst of all that, and law and order justice and fairness entered in and uh, you know that's a it's a miracle mm -hmm. and it's a miracle of, of holy presence and how that restores relationship into relationships that don't seem <laughs> as if they're working because I can I can tell you that I don't think I ever had a day when I ever thought my relationship with Brenda was ever working <laughs> within my Jeffrey thinking. Mm -hmm. There was always something wrong. I was always taking offense, being offended by, you know, arguing, convincing, just, you know, raging lunatic, <laughs> this version of myself, this preferred version of myself, you know. It's what I had to learn. I had to earn my freedom. I have to earn my freedom from that. And this is how I earn my freedom from that. I mean, everything else as well, other than this hour and a half that we spend together is... Is all it's all the one it's all the same thing it's all the same training the same teaching the same learning curve. But uh, the experience that I have and have had in here has been invaluable, a precious gift, you know, in terms of really being able. Because a lot of the way I'm talking right now, people would just what the fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> You know, he's nuts. You know, they would talk over it. The conversations would, you know, you know, nobody wants to 
largely nobody really wants to talk about love and truth and reality and share you know evidence of that honor that respect that most of the pitter patter that we engage in in worldly discourse interaction is all to diss it to talk over it to push it away you know to conceal it to hide it but you know it doesn't have to be that way it need not be that way and takes courage you know and and uh beyond the world courage and I love this quote which I've shared with you guys many times is the idea that the you know we don't realize to the degree to, to which we've conformed to an impossible situation an impossible mm -hmm. system the way in which we've adapted to it taken it on it's insipid sometimes insipid yeah the, the way we've we've agreed to it we've we've said okay you know so I, I was gonna say you know I mean I if you ask me do you want to give up your illusions I'd say yeah but I'm not aware of the mind that keeps making the illusion seem so real you understand what I'm saying yeah you're not well that's true you're I'm not aware holy that self I'm convincing myself of my illusions Oh, I see what you're saying. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if you were to say... You're lost you know, in it. Yeah, I mean, you know, you don't really have clothes on. I, say, I agree with you. I don't really have clothes on. But I really feel like I have clothes on. <laughs> yeah. You understand? Yes. Yeah. So it's hard to... Maybe that's what the emperor, the emperor's new clothes is. Maybe it's about illusion, you know, the, the story. Well, that's what everything is here, down here, in the realm of perception. It's all illusion. Mm. None of it is real. None of it is true, Right. But in the midst of, it, of all this, the holy truth is still the holy truth. Reality is still reality. In other words, there's still, reality is still here. The all, who is the all in all, is still at the heart of everything that I look upon. God is in everything I see. It's almost like, I mean, the ego, there's a part of us that wants reality. But because we're using the ego to process the world, we want the illusions to be reality. Well, it seems. So it seems. All right? For well, a little while, so it seems. But, but it seems like we still we want a real thing. It's just that we keep going to the wrong well, cut off. You you want the reality of the re, uh, of the thing you are. You want that primary fundamental relationship of soulful self. That's what you want. Nobody longs for anything else but who they really are, in which is the unity with Creator creating, right? Your oneness is in God lies in the truth of who you are, not in your fantasy about yourself, not in your perceptions about yourself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Would you, you would really almost stop looking if you already found it, you know? Well, Ultimately, the only thing that happens in the process of becoming miracle-minded is you realize you have always found it. You know, it's like Dorothy in the morning, she wakes up from, she gets home after the, this sojourn in the, in the Oz, right? And she realizes, you know, that because home doesn't go anywhere, I'm always at home. None of that happened. Ultimately, as you come awake in your dream of separation, you realize that none of this is real or really happening. You've been out of your mind. <laughs> it's the effect of my thoughts. It's what I think to be so, not my reality as you simultaneously are comforted and assured and reminded and encouraged to think again. And in those moments of when you're really ready to take that next step, you have experiences that are beyond what you thought. You don't know what it is and your mind tries to defend itself against it and say, oh, that was nothing, it was just, you know, Hallucination. It was a hallucination, <laughs> yeah. But you know different. 
you know, it's like those moments when you get those, the hairs raise up on your arm and you get goosebumps and you feel that sense of something complete. You can't, you, you don't know what that is. You can't describe it, but simultaneously you know what it is. But aren't the things here that extend love real? Um, only the love I share has reality, which is true. And that's also the gateway or the portal to, to the understanding that permits or allows relationship with everything in my dream. So that the dream begins to reflect reality rather than that place of rocks and hard places and misunderstanding. So, yeah, you know, love can and will enter easily into any situation, any relationship, if I am willing. It can and will, right? Jesus says, I'll enter into every relationship, every situation, every seeming moment that you're in, if, if that be your will. And he says, I will, um, I'll do everything that doesn't matter with you and for you. I'll do it for you. You, you, you can actually have an experience where you don't know what you're doing. Things are just getting done. You know, you got to the bank, you made the deposit, you balanced the checkbook, you did this, you did that. You went to that meeting you thought might be difficult. You had that encounter with that relative who's always a pain in my ass. You know, and you got through it without that usual whatever. You, you, got, you got through it, right? So... <coughs> So, you know, this idea of true self, Christ self, universal self, real self will do everything for you if you permit that aspect of your real identity to enter in. If you're willing to step back and let that, him, lead the way. Who, who is him? Oh, him. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Life. Yeah, life, creator creating, Holy Spirit, you know, holy self, my soul, you know. Let, let my God created soul enter in and speak on behalf of this situation and circumstance so that everyone can get what they need in my apparent dream where everyone is so needy including this thing I think I am, <laughs> right? So he says, I will, if it be your will, I'll enter in and I'll, I'll do all the things. I'll take care of everything that does not matter while guiding you along the way of everything that does matter. I'll take care of the irrelevant, the mundane, the stuff that is boring and repetitive and be with you and enter into and provide for you and encourage you and walk, take every step with you in all the stuff that does matter that you and you alone must do. You know, being with your mother when she's passing or your father when he's passing or your family when that thing happens, you know, which it seems to happen to all of us or when you're you have to get together with someone with some family who just lost someone in Las, Las Vegas you know yeah he's he's trying he's, he's getting his needs met <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to do it good obsession come on <laughs> he took over <laughs> so, 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 yeah, the reality is that the idea that my perceptions are, is, are just an illusion, not the truth, does not change my true relationship with everything that I perceive. My true relationship, remember in, in the Course Jesus talks about the real world, the real world. 
The real world is the world that you see, but intuit by the grace of God through that understanding that's beyond that world that God is in everything I see. I have to convince God about who I am and of my own worth and my own value or convince God of his worth and his value? I don't think I need to preach anymore. So, you know, my job shifts and it becomes one of just being happy, being at rest, being content in my own soulfulness, even when I seem to forget what that is. Celebrating my ability to remember that and to share it with words, without words, in actions, without actions, because non-actions are as powerful as actions. If you're the one in that relationship that always has to do the talking and the explaining and the convincing, imagine what a miracle that might be like if all of a sudden you weren't that way. You know, if you actually listened and shifted gears and decided, you know, I'm here to hear, not to explain anything or, or, you know, prove anything, right? I'm just here to, I'm just here to be helpful. And in a world where most of us within our egocentric misidentities almost never listen <laughs> because we're busy making other plans, right? Busy thinking of stuff that I got to say if we just became interested in what the other was saying and how that affects the whole dynamic of things. I mean, my whole family thing shifted and changed out of that. A new found sense of comfort and being at home in my life began to emerge from that because I was always very, very talkative. I mean, I still am, but, you know, as you know. <laughs> but, you know, you can interrupt me at any time and ask anything or share anything. You know, I mean, I've already uh, many times, uh, you know, expressed the fact that I'm certain I don't know anything more or less than you do. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and yet... The, the plenitude of creative intelligence, creative reality, loving presence will present itself in some meaningful, substantial, validating form if that's what I want. And I'm clear about that. That is what I want. Because I don't have a better version of that. <laughs> I don't have anything that comes close to that that kind of surety, that kind of, that kind of sense of being, you know, being at home and at rest. That doesn't in any way resemble anything I ever thought or believed to be true. And that is my comfort, that is, you know, so you know, what did we do? I think we did a workbook lesson last. Last time. <laughs> yeah. So, and the, the uh, I, you know, what time is it now? Anybody have a sense um, of the time? I don't. Uh, 7.55. Great. So, we're doing so good. I'm use the Everybody okay? Everybody comfortable? Is it too warm in here? Should I turn that fan on? Does anybody need fan? It's good. Okay. I feel good. Maybe open the window just a little more? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I could do that. I think the air is not coming so much from this side now, it's coming from this side. But we can uh, Where did you get the pants from? The pants? I got thrift store, you know. She finds it. She finds it. It finds her. It's good.
this has been so powerful to come from. It'll Jesus. continue to be. Yeah, it, yeah, whatever yeah. this. You start a group. You start a group. Jeffrey's after me to start a group. Well, <laughs> it's certainly <laughs> a, a viable I, I, option. That you know, and 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 I and I that's I do want to do that, and I do want to call in too at the same time, so I can get that number again. Yeah. See, once you go down on somebody's bulletin board, as I'll do that. Say you'll you'll go crazy. You'll go crazy. You're, you you may go crazy. Your mind will you know try to convince you what a mistake that was. And I don't have the right to. I'll never be able to. And simultaneously, you'll have. And I, tr I do trust that. I do. You'll have experiences of unusual experiences that will convince you otherwise. Mm -hmm. But this has been a gift. Well, it is for me. That's how I perceive it. You know, that's why 30 plus years I'm still doing it and as excited and inspired about it and as ready to do it and looking forward to it as much as I am because I'm never disappointed. You know, I mean, it's always rich and rewarding and transformational for me. I mean, you know, I, I'm... I'm not in Kansas anymore, <laughs> you know, in, when I have the benefit of your presence, the gift of your holy self, which goes with you everywhere you go, right? Jesus says over and over in the Course, my brothers suffer because they, they don't know, because they do not love themselves. You know, we just don't, we, we, within our mundane thinking, we fail to recognize our own, our own worth. Which, by the way, you can train your mind to recognize in every holy instant. <laughs> so consistently and so vigilantly and so devotedly that you never seem to forget anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the hard part for me. So when I go to group and I come go home, I'm like, oh, okay, everything, I'm at peace and everything makes sense. And then... Next morning, I'm back in the same drama, and then... Yeah, me too. I mean, it works for me too. You know, tomorrow morning, something will happen, or the day after, the feeling I have right now will seem not to be the case. It will seem not to be an influence. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll feel the, the slip, that it's slipping away. Now, I have to remind myself that I'm okay. That feeling doesn't mean anything. That feeling, that reality, that truth, that love, that holy self is slipping away is just my thinking. It's just the thought I'm having, not my reality. I'm okay. I have to remind myself frequently and throughout the day that I'm all right. I'm okay. It's okay. Well, oh, but, you know, Las Vegas doesn't... I'm okay. Nothing real can be threatened. I can't be threatened. All this hysteria that I'm the author of has no effect, no reality, no capacity to change that God's thought of me and for me, of which is available to me as a perfect alternative to what I think anytime I'm willing to think with him. To th you know, to realize that love that is being shared underneath all the apparent distracting drama that I think is happening, which isn't really happening, because this is a dream. And all the while, I'm safe in God. I'm safe in perfect love. Perfect love has never stopped being what it is. I can calm down. I can afford to rest in peace. You know, it's okay. Nobody has to do anything. Nobody has to realize anything. Trump doesn't have to change. You know, he doesn't have to get impeached. He doesn't have to, the leader of North Korea can do whatever he wants. Yeah. No, that's not what I prefer. I have my preferences, but I'm not wedded to my preferences. I have them and their thoughts, but it's my reality that has precedence that I'm most interested in. And that's what keeps it in influence is my trust in it, my faith in it, which is my trust and faith in God. 
in you, in what you are, in who you are, and how much you mean to me. <laughs> I mean, it's all right here, unless I think you're the way I think you are. And that would only come if I first decided against myself and thought that I was the, w the way I think I am. Out of which I would lose everything. Lose my heart and my soul and, you know, you know that old, that Christmas carol, long lay the world in sin and error, pining. Right? Pining, complaining. Until he appeared. Who is he? Universal self, one self united in God. And then the soul knows its worth. So how does that happen? Well, I have to set aside the playthings of a child. I have to set aside these immature, world-based, erroneous aspects <laughs> of my own mythology. Not make a big stink about it or fuss about it or make, you know belittle myself about it. I mean, thoughts are just thoughts. Insanity is just insanity. And I, and Jesus, our Christ, our Holy Spirit, or the mind of God, makes you strong in yourself, even in the midst of your own insane thinking, where you can be a conscious and, a, and an awake witness to your own errors, but not be partial to them, not be obligated to them, to have to act them out or believe them. You're perfectly free and you're choosing all the time what you decide to get up close and intimate with in terms of your own thinking and feelings. Those are decisions you're making, right? And I must learn to recognize those decisions so that I can release myself from my own attempt to be an enemy to myself my own attempt to attack myself, which, <laughs> what benefit could there be in that? I, and I must learn to recognize what, those, what that attack is, the, the many forms that are unique to me in which I attempt to diminish myself or belittle myself or bind myself to unreality, you know? So, you know, I'm looking at these workbook lessons now, which I've been, you know, doing for I don't even know how many times I've gone through this process. And this is, this is later on in the course, right? This is, I mean, you know, the, like I'm looking at the... Uh, I'm on lesson 330. Okay. So I'm looking at 261 now or... Uh, 265, that's, that's the one I currently have been looking on, looking at, 265. Yeah, but I just want to read the ones leading up to it, how, you know, powerful it all is. You know, uh, and they're, you know, the, they're, at this point in the workbook, there are these moments where it asks very poignant questions which are important for me to consider and realize, like, what is the body? The body, I'm looking at now at that, it's called, what is the body? It's, it's just uh, prior to lesson 261. It's, I see it. Yeah, the body is, is a fence. The Son of God imagines he is built to separate parts of his self from oneself from other parts. It is within this fence he thinks he lives. That, that's the world, you know, I think I see. It is within this fence, this world he thinks he lives, to die as it decays and crumbles. For within this fence he thinks that he is safe from love. <laughs> Identifying with his safety, he regards himself as what his safety is. How else could he be certain he remains within the body, keeping love outside, right? It's a decision I make, that I'm a body. I have to unlearn the, un you know, this fantasy. You know the study, of the, they studied young, very young toddlers, and they'll, they'll put a dot on their forehead 
and they'll look at a mirror and they'll think the dot is out there. Oh, and yeah. then after a few months, they realize that the dot is right. Them. Yeah, it's on yeah. their body. They so get the concept yeah, of a reflection. But for a while, like we don't recognize we have a body, which is yeah. really interesting. So we do learn it. Learn we, that we learn that we yeah have a yeah body. oh totally yeah and we are yeah. a body. We, well, we learn that illusion. Yeah, every you know this is hard. This is hard learning. I mean, it's really, really difficult to make illusions true. You know, to to give things that we perceive or believe to be hard, the experience, the perception that they are hard, that they're painful. I mean, it's all acquired. We learned how to have this experience. Every bit of it was chosen, decided for. Oh, that earlier quote that I never really completed was the idea that the the opposite of cowardice, the opposite of courage is not cowardice, it's conformity. We conform, we adjust to our families, to what we think our families want, or what they think, we think, they think we are. We, we agree to it, or, not, or we object to it. It's all learned, everything. Because none of it is real. This, none of this exists. And I realize how that's lunacy within the science of the world, within the mind that thinks the world to be true, but none of it exists. And I had that experience of which I saw for myself that it was true that there was no world. The entire life that I thought to be reality was this tiny space Back this tiny dot, infinitesimally small, in the corner of my awareness. And where I was was just out here in the everything everywhere of it all. Seeing the life I thought was my life and realizing that it has nothing to do with me at all. It's amazing. The body will not stay, yet this he sees as double safety, for the Son of God's impermanence is proof, quote, his fences work and do the task his mind assigns to them. For if his oneness still remained untouched, who could attack and who could be attacked? Who could be victor? Who could be his prey? Who could be victim? Who the murderer? And if he did not die, what proof is there that God's eternal son can be destroyed? The body is a dream. Like other dreams, it sometimes seems to picture happiness, but can quite suddenly revert to fear, where every dream is born in fear. For only love creates in truth, and truth can never fear. Made to be fearful must the body serve the purpose given it. But we can change the purpose which the body will obey by changing what we think that it is for. Right? And as your mind gets clear and wakes up to its reality, what all this really means, what I'm here for, then it becomes a means to express Reality, it becomes real, it, it becomes the presence of reality, it becomes, it, it comes and serves and does the thing that's the heart and soul of what, who and what it is you really are. You become the benefactor of your own ever-present holy reality, which convinces you of itself, because you're willing to let it enter in to your to your dream. It sort of moves ahead of you at that point, right? Well, you're, you're, you're it watching. doesn't really move ahead of you because it's always here and there is no ahead of you. But There's I mean, only you. Because my words are wrong, but... No, no, your words are not I'm, wrong. When I'm, when I'm just I'm, trying to use words right, to... Right, I know you do. <laughs> you know. I, um, I, I, I experience sometimes how just what you were saying that, you know, 
it's not actually trying to be or doing or trying to have it happen, but to have it actually happen. That there's that space of this total, which begins with moments. with the recognition that it is already happening. Yeah. I'm already here. Holy sonship, holy presence, holy soulful self is already here and always here. So it begins with the willingness to recognize that maybe what I think is just getting in the way. And all the while, everything that is ripe and ready and true and profoundly essential and important to me is right here. And it'll inform me of itself if I stop thinking against it, if I stop thinking it away, if I stop getting involved in what I think. Thoughtfulness enters in. As I set aside my fearful thinking and my fearful impulses and reactiveness, love enters. My awareness, because it was always here to begin with. So, so made to be fearful, must the body serve the purpose given it, but we can change the purpose which the body will obey by changing what we think that it is for. I'm here only to be truly helpful. I'm not here to get anything. I'm not here to prove anything, convince anything, do anything at all. I don't have to do anything. How liberating is that? I don't have to, you know, it's not about any of that. I'm here to learn. I'm here to discover all that's already been done. God's accomplishment. I'm here to be a witness for it and to, to look upon it, to celebrate it, to allow it to present itself rather than attempting to suppress it or deny it or distract myself from it. How do I get there? I have to recognize that I don't know anything. All the stuff I think I, I know that seems to be so convincing about what I think it doesn't, it's not convincing at all if I recognize it for what it is, which are just thoughts that I'm thinking. And I can behold reality because sight is given me, because soulfulness has eyes that see. So we can change the purpose which the body will obey by changing what we think that it's for. I'm here to be only helpful. How can I help? It's very simple. You know, everyone will show you, they'll tell you, you know, they'll, you'll be informed in some way if you hold the question. If you allow the question to present itself. The body is the means by which God's Son then returns to sanity. Though it was made to fence him into hell without escape, yet has the goal of heaven been exchanged for the pursuit of hell. I have to change my mind, what I think it's all for. Just get out of the business of trying to get ahead. That doesn't mean I have to stop caring about my job or about my music or about the worldly stuff that I'm involved in, it means I can't possibly fulfill, reach any experience of fulfillment regarding those things if I have at it in my traditional historical way. Only by the grace of God, only by the guidance of the Christ can I understand what the nature, the privilege, the honor of beholding that is, of having a relationship with that is. Only by the grace of God can I be with you in any meaningful way. Can I see beyond the ideas, the thoughts, the perceptions I have of you and discover the singular self that we both have and are. The unspeakable worth of the Holy Self the privilege and the honor of knowing that self, celebrating that light, that self, you know, sh you know, singing and uh, 
you know, out to every valley, every creature great and small, that's the only thing that you're here to do. And there's an endless variety of ways to do it that are all unique to you, that are your attributes, which spirit, soul will use once you allow it, once you identify yourself with it and permit it. Want it. Yes, lead me. You know, show me the way. What are you reading, Jeff? Uh, I'm reading in the uh, workbook. It's right before Lesson 261. Yeah, it's called what is, what is the Body, yeah. Right before it. So the body is the means by which God's Son returns to sanity that was made to fence him into hell without escape. Yet as the goal of heaven been exchanged for the pursuit of hell, the Son of God extends his hand to reach his brother and to help him walk along the road with him. Now is the body holy. Now it serves to heal the mind that it was made to kill. You will identify with what you think will make you safe. Whatever it may be, you will believe that it is one with you. Your safety lies in truth and not in lies. Love is your safety. Love, unity, one self, oneness, creation, all-inclusive, holy, sacred, thank God Almighty, oneness. Love, perfect love. Your safety lies in that. In, tr in that truth, in the reality of that, not in lies, not in what I think. Love is your safety, out of which you become defenseless. You realize your strength, your strength is invulnerable. You are, you are a universal, eternal being, created in the likeness of your own creation. What are you worried about? And the reality and the presence of that will fulfill and accomplish whatever needs to be fulfilled or accomplished in every area of your life if you allow that to be the song that you sing, the purpose that you enter into whatever it is you enter into with. It's only to learn. It's only to be helpful. It's only to celebrate the living, present, abiding, infinite worthiness of the holy here and now. So, you know, your safety lies in truth, not in lies. Love is your safety. Fear does not exist. Why? Because God doesn't, didn't create fear. It has no basis. There's no thought to it. Identify with love and you are safe. Even in a world as bent as the one I think I see where everything seems threatening to me. <laughs> Identify with love and you are home. Identify with love and find yourself. Awaken to yourself. Love is the way. All right, and then the work, then the lessons that follow from that are so beautiful. God is my refuge and security. Not, not any of the things I think I just have to do today to feel okay about myself. <laughs> Lesson 262, let me perceive no differences today. No matter what I look upon, no matter, you know, what I think myself to see or perceive, let me perceive no differences. It's all one thing. The teaching of Curly, you know, from City Slickers, right? He teaches the Billy Crystal character that the secret to life is one thing. It's you know, this idea, this understanding that surpasses all the worldly insanity. Billy Crystal says, well, aren't you going to tell me what it is? And Curly says, no, you got to find out for yourself. Everyone has to come to that in whatever way that's right for you to come to that, to learn of that. All this is, is a means to lead the way and help you shorten, collapse the time that that discovery, that awakening seems to take. This will rid you of unnecessary time and delay. 
that's what a, the purpose of a meaningful teaching is, is to support you in getting you there in your own sweet way when you're ready. Knowing all the while that you, there was never a moment when you weren't ready. <laughs> when you weren't already yourself. There was never a moment when you were not at home. There was never really a moment when you worried or feared or had pain. Ever. <laughs> None of that ever ever happened. Ever. <laughs> Only the creations of God are true. <laughs> and you can celebrate that and, you know, live under the influence of that anytime you choose to. So let me perceive no differences today. 263 was my holy vision sees all things as pure. All things, all relationships, no matter what that one says or doesn't say, no matter what they agree to or don't agree to, no matter what they believe or don't believe. I don't have to do anything. Next one is uh, I am surrounded by the love of God. I'm surrounded by the love of God. And then the one I'm doing now, creation's gentleness is all I see. But wait a minute, I think I see something over there that doesn't look too gentle. That's an irrelevant thought. You know, why would I go there? It's only going to cost me and it's only going to hurt me. It's only going to hold me back. It's only going to distract me. And I only have one goal. And that goal is peace. And peace originates from Holy Creator creating in the Holy Here Now within me and through me. It includes me. Which is why I'm surrounded by the love of God. <laughs> okay, what time we got now? Uh, 8.22. Okay, so we're down good. Timing is good. And uh, so, I don't know, questions, uh, you know, a, a practical stuff because this stuff has to be practical. Did it make sense, uh, Harold, when, when I was saying about that? I mean, there's really no limit to how effective you can learn to be in terms of dismissing irrelevant thoughts no matter how provocative they may momentarily be felt or, or seen you know where someone says something that really seems hurtful or i mean that's really where we have to practice it's yeah it's not, it's not the, the things that are it's not in here in my life <laughs> not, yeah. yeah i mean it's not the pleasantries of life it's, yeah it's the things that i find i resist I'm against it's yeah a, I have to look at that yeah and what I basically had a look at was that I was pretty much against everything in my own way I had an opinion that more or less separated me from that so it was I was always operating out of a form of being against someone or something my brother my father my mother you know my wife my cat <laughs> this thing, you know, oh, it's exhausting. It's wearying. You know, it's just, it's insane. It's hell. It's hellish. No good can come of it. And then when when I when I stopped more or less of doing that, in came those around me that were still doing it. <laughs> well, yeah. There's always an opportunity for <laughs> to share the wealth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, to to share this newfound experience of <laughs> what do you tell you know what what's happening there? You know, you well, I was attacked the other day. I was attacked a few times. Boom, 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 boom. You know, and or so you perceive. So I perceived. Yeah. And I didn't respond. I didn't react. And, um, and Kevin was talking about that. That's where we really need the, you know. And, um, yeah, that's the value of work, the, the workplace, or and, and, uh, out on the street. It was like intense, and uh, you know, I'm talking verbally, okay, and um, and then so I did sort of respond. When, <laughs> when um, 
when it was said to me that, um, or, you know, I said, okay, over and out. I decided, let's just stop this now, over and out. Mm -hmm. And the person said, oh, it's been over and out a long time ago. I'm glad you woke up, you know. Okay, <laughs> so, whatever that means. <laughs> whatever that means. So I said, and I wouldn't know. <laughs> something about, um, I don't remember exactly what happened, but she, it was something else that, and I said, well, I'm, she said, well, thank you. For, oh, I said, you should just come and enjoy yourself. And she said, um, or not. Thank you. you. <laughs> right, exactly. Or, uh, oh, don't worry, I will, and something like that. And um, there was one thing that I did say that I have to say that was the streak of the old in there. And it was, um, well, I'm not going to thank, she thanked me for something. I said, well, I'm not going to thank you for just another beating. <laughs> Oops, this <is> terrible. <laughs> But I have it, to it, tell doesn't you, it doesn't I have matter. I tell you, she did stop in midair for the longest period before she was it, it doesn't matter. And at any time, at any moment, you can review what appeared to be back then. Right. Under the guidance and supervision of, of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And reintroduce what you really mean. Mm -hmm. Right? Directly to that other... Mm -hmm. Who's it seemed to be about and something I utter, you know, um, it wasn't what I don't think it was what I meant. This is what I you can clean all that up retroactively from I the present, really, I right? I didn't really mean it very seriously, though. I felt truthful about that, that there were a lot of beatings coming for no reason. I wasn't upset, though. When I said it, yeah, I just felt well, I'm that, not. You know, I'm not saying. No, I, mean, I, I know, but I'm I, only pointing. I'm right. only attempting to point out. I'm yes. not judging whether it was no, appropriate I, I for you, you to say yeah. that or not. Yeah, I'm only saying. Often, I would have the experience of I shouldn't have said that. I didn't need to say that. No, when and I was it, expressing it, I, I, I felt that there might have been a streak of some old, old behavior in there. You know that the possibility is that I could have let that go. But in the moment, truthfully, I felt that it was fine. That it was okay. what I needed to say. Well, yeah. what's fine is fine. Yeah. All I'm saying is you always have available to you the option for greater clarity and a, a better expression that more closely reflects what I really mean. Yes, I understand. Right? Because... Things aren't really back there. Everything that seemed to be back there is really here, and you can access it. Right? That's what the the idea of of holy the mind you share with God really is. Is it's all inclusive. Nothing exists separate or apart from anything else. So any problematic relationships, any problematic events in your life that involve misunderstanding that seem to come toward you from others or from you toward others, all of that can be cleaned up. And can, what can be introduced is a miracle of thoughtfulness, of understanding of what I really mean is. This is what I mean, and, you know. And Some it, of the workbook lessons are, are based on that idea. Absolutely. Where they say, imagine someone who is wronged you, you've probably already decided on who it is, and then, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but what you're doing is you're accessing your past about them, and going in and... From the present. And going in and cleaning up your thoughts and feelings about that person, which is all based on the past. Yeah, because when you think of the past, when are you thinking of the past? Only now. Yeah, and so it, it, that version of the past, that memory, that reflection is really occurring to you right now. Whatever there is about that past, you're forming that now. You're making it that way. So, you know, you have the option to really clarify and clean up or heal that moment that may have or seem to reflect indecisiveness on my part or ambiguity where I wasn't clear, right? And mm -hmm. therefore, you know, I have this lingering feeling that I said something I might have said differently or been cleaner about or clearer about. So that's I think that's really important, you know. And it also works in the future sense. Like if you're, you know, gonna be meeting with that person that you you, you seem to 
I seem to always have the sense of I never quite achieve being comfortable with them. You can set up, you can introduce that comfort, that acceptance, that recognition, that idea of a greater blessing, a loving recognition of their worth before you even have that moment in time when you're going to connect with them. It's using the mind well. Yeah, it's using your mind as it, as it should be used, as it can be used. Yeah. to reflect reality. Reality is where what you mean, let's see, you know, where you say what you mean and you mean what you say and there's no ambiguity there. You know, you're, those encounters all reflect that. They all add up. You know, the getting is good for everybody. I have a, sim a similar situation with um, a friend who always verbally abuses me, right, and accuses me of things that I didn't even do. And and I finally, I mean, I, it took me a while to get to the point where I'm comfortable basically saying I don't have to beat myself up, right? Absolutely. I don't have to listen to this and just get comfortable hanging up on them. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, I don't it was a wonderful this. conversation. Thank yeah. you. Right. I gotta. I gotta go. I gotta go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'll never forget this. This is a, a lovely story that my wife tells about. Uh, uh, you know, she she's more Buddhist in her sensitive spiritual sensitivities than anything else, um, and she went to a. Uh, uh, an event that was being hosted by one of the famous gurus, uh, Baba Muktananda, and uh, who has an ashram across the street. Although it's he passed, it's now under Very the nice. yeah Guru Mai. Yeah. And there was a gentleman who got up, who was attempting to get. He was asking a question, but he was really trying to get. Baba Muktananda to agree with him about a situation where he felt pe uh, certain people were being disrespected or, dis or, or abused. Um, and, you know, the plight of those people. And Baba Muktananda wouldn't even go there. He just, he just said, come back when you have the right question, <laughs> you know? And now that guy, I don't know, the guy might have left upset. He might have felt like, you know, he was disrespected. I, I don't know. I wasn't there. But in a way, you know, he, that's the lesson. yeah, and he was yeah. expressing, look, that's, that's for this, for, for what I'm wanting to express and share with you, that's an irrelevant question right now. <laughs> so give that some thought and come back when that idea makes sense to you and we'll go further, you know? So, so, you know, there's nothing but opportunity in the midst of our life, nothing but opportunity. And, and I, you know, I need to be reminded of that all the time because I, I can forget, you know, once I get into my world and into, you know, my thinking, I forget that it's all good. Mm. And I can relax. I don't have to worry about anything. And that there's a way to, well, f to get through, to deal with responsibly and, and transformationally anything, miraculously, anything that seems to happen. In, in my world. I need to know that, you know, and be reminded of that. And Holy Spirit, the idea of Holy Spirit is that reminder, you know, that that part of what you are and who you are that knows not of forgetting. That's never uncertain, that's, that's never uncertain, never doubtful. Never, never worryful. That part of the mind you share with God that never fears, that knows not of fear. That's what you want to be informed by, guided by, influenced by. And that can occur for you and with you and through you no matter where you are.
who, no matter who you're with, no matter what you are, no matter what you did or, where, or what you seem to be doing or what you think you need to do or the next thing is that you're going to do. That part of you is always present and always ready to provide the good, the goods, you know, the way. And you can never think of it. You'll never know what that is. But you will need to know what it is in terms of an explanation or a description because the experience of it will convince you of itself. It's an experience beyond words, beyond explanation, beyond perception, beyond anything I can conceive of. That's what comforts me. That's what assures me. That's what informs me. That's what guides me. That's what God is for me. And he shows up in the most unlikely places, which is when I'm with anybody, <laughs> doing anything. <laughs> it's all a part of that if I would allow it to be. And it, my decision is to allow it. Why? I'd be nuts not to. <laughs> okay. So, anything else? Thank you. You guys are great. We're great. Allie wanted to come tonight, couldn't come because somebody uh, couldn't.